So we're looking today, as Jay mentioned, and as we will see in this passage from Matthew chapter 7, beginning in 20, verse 24, we're going to be looking at a foundation. Bow with me in prayer, and we just ask God to, to lead us and teach us today. Lord, we've spent time worshiping you. We've spent time reviewing a passage of Scripture that uh, many of us are trying to memorize not just for the sake of a checklist, but that your word would be hidden in our heart so that we would not sin against you, so that we would not try to do things on our own. We come to this passage where this sermon that we know as the Sermon on the Mount is being wrapped up in the Gospel of Matthew. And Father, we, we want to hear your teaching today. So, Father, throughout this room, we ask that your Holy Spirit would teach us. And in teaching us, God, that you would change us. It's in the name of Christ that we pray these things. Amen. When we look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, uh, this is for everyone who hears my voice. If you're here today and you're listening, this is for you. doesn't matter the day of the week the day of the month or the year, this will be recorded and Lord willing put on uh, the internet somewhere. Somebody may hear this weeks, months, years from now, this, this is for you. It doesn't even matter what state or what country you are in. This is for you and this is for me. And we see this right off the bat in Matthew 7, verse 24. Look at this where it says, therefore, whoever. I... I, uh, I've got a bunch of this kind of blocked out so you can't see it. So we can just focus on this first part. After everything he has said in teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, he's teaching, teaching, teaching. He gets all the way to the end and he says, therefore, whoever. I, I, I again, being an English major, um, I love looking and taking words and opening them up and understanding them better. One of the things that I saw about this that really spoke to me is this word, whoever, is singular. It's singular. Jesus has been talking to the masses, but when he gets here, he says, whoever, 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 each one of us, whoever. Beth and I were talking about this yesterday, and I said, we may live our faith, and help and encourage each other, right? We do that. That's part of what it means to be part of a community, certainly part of what it means to be husband and wife. But at the end of the day, I have to make this decision my own. I have to do this my own. I have to accept this myself. I can't rely on my wife's faith. It's got to be mine. I can't rely on my parents' faith. It has to be mine. I can't rely on the fact that my wife or my parents or my children or my church family is going to apply this to their lives. It, it sits in my lap. And so for each one of us here today, each, each one here today, yes, it applies to families, but to each one individual, this is... This is for you. This is something that each one of us need to consider individually. We know this verse, John 3, 16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, whoever, whosoever, however you learned it, believes in him. That word is singular. It's singular, Whosoever or whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I, I don't get saved because my mom and dad are Christians. I, I had to make that decision myself. And as Jesus is speaking here, he's saying, who, therefore, whoever. John goes on and it reminds us, verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, the whole world, through him might be saved. It's available for the whole world, but it still is an individual decision. Friends, this is for you and for me. So verse 24, he goes on and he says, therefore, 
whoever, whoever what? Well, whoever hears these sayings of mine, whoever hears this, whoever physically, physically, neurologically, the sound waves move through the air, go in my ear, bump around stuff on the inside, whatever the doctors and the experts can tell you, vibrate something that resonates and moves up through through the neurons and electro electrodes and all that good stuff that I know nothing about, goes to my brain and registers hearing. That's part of what he's saying. It's, it's, that's part of it. Though whoever, whoever hears these sayings of mine. But it's, it's more than that. It's to be in an audience and you are part of this conversation. You're part of this talk. You're part of hearing what it is that Christ said. But, but it goes even more than that. It's whoever hears, whoever understands these things. We, we might not understand all of it, but the things that you and I understand in God's word, we are responsible for. We're responsible for. We hear it. It comes in, it moves around, the Spirit of God touches it, moves it to our heart, moves it to our head, helps move it around so that we understand it. Whoever hears, whoever hears these sayings of mine, but it's not, it's not just that. He goes on and includes and does them. And does them. I, when I was in college, I, um, I remember having biology uh, and, and uh, history and classes that I did not do well in, and I struggled. Dates are ter I have a terrible time with dates. So one of the things that I did was I recorded myself saying dates. 1775, the Marine Corps birthday. 1770, so recorded dates of whatever class I was in. And then I would put it on my ears, you know, listen through the, my Walkman or whatever it was, and listen to those dates so that maybe, just maybe, it would soak into my subconscious. You, we, we understand each other. I want to hear these things. But more than that, he's not just saying, I just want you to hear it. I want you to hear it and do it. Otherwise, we just fill our church with people so they can sit there, words are spoken, and that covers it. No, he says, I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it and do it. When we look at this and what the different translations say, check this out. Um, it says, whoever hears these sayings of mine, New King James and ESV says, and does them. New American Standard and the Christian Standard Bible, you might have one of these. Um, whoever hears these sayings of mine, something like that, and acts on them. Or the New Living Translation and follows it. Whoever hears these words of mine or my teaching and follows it. Or NIV and puts them into practice. However your Bible says it, all of the translations have the same idea. It is to hear it and to actually carry it out. Um, my, you might hear a mother say, or a wife say, pick up your socks. I may hear it, but she just doesn't want me to hear it. Beth doesn't want me to just hear her say that. She wants me to what? Do it. Do it. If my wife calls and says, hey, I want you to pick up a half gallon of milk for me. Did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard what you said. She doesn't want me just to hear it. She wants me to pick up a half gallon of milk. And Jesus explains after all of his teaching in the, in the uh, Sermon on the Mount, he says, listen, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, anyone who, who hears these words of mine and then puts it into practice, this is not, this is not unique to the Sermon on the Mount. We, we can't just say, well, Jesus is saying that because, no, it's, it's a lot of places. Matthew 12, we read this last week. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. It's not a matter of hearing the Father's will. It's a matter of actually doing it. James chapter 1, verse 22, a long section, but it's important just the same. James says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And then he gives this illustration for anyone who is a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. 
for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. Don't just hear it, but hear it and do it, because it's the same idea that you step in front of a mirror and say, oh, I need to shave, and you turn, and you're like, I look pretty good today. No, when you see it, when you hear it, when you understand it, be a doer of it as well. Verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it. It's not just a matter of, well, I picked up my socks today. What is she complaining about if I didn't pick them up, you know, if I don't pick them up tomorrow? No, it's pick them up, pick them up, pick them up. Make sure you pick them up. Do it, hear it, do it, keep hearing it, keep doing it. Looks into the perfect law and uh, law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. I, uh, here, here's one other one. Uh, James chapter 4, a little later in James, verse 17. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. So if I'm hearing what it is that Jesus is saying to do, I hear it. Sound waves, I read it in my eyes, it goes to my brain, and I understand it. And I don't do it. It's sin. And sin separates us from God. So my question that I ask, I ask myself and I ask you as well, are you only hearing what God is telling you to do? Or are you a hearer and a doer? Are you actually doing it? And again, as he says, are you continuing in it? Are you continuing to do it? Let's not just be hearers, but let's be hearers and doers. Jesus continues and says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. I have a group of guys that I've been meeting with for uh, 16 years, 16 and a half years we've been meeting and uh, going through the word of God together. And um, uh, we're in Proverbs. We're working through Proverbs. We finish Proverbs tomorrow. And we have been learning the difference between a wise person and a foolish person. And one of the guys, I said this last week, I said, what is it that... Uh, you know, what do you learn from this? We've been in Proverbs. What do, you, what do you learn? And one of the guys spoke up and said, well, I'll tell you one thing. I don't want to be a fool, and I'd rather be wise. And, and as we look at this, you're like, you know what? Given those options, yeah, I'd rather be the wise person. And so Jesus is saying, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I compare him. I liken him to a wise person, a wise man who built his house on the rock. Um, in, in life, Jay and I were talking about this last night and, and this morning. In life, what are the three important things in real estate? Three important things in real estate. Location, location, location. You can change the colors of your drapes. You can change the, uh, the size of the porch. You can change the color of the roof. Might take a little bit of effort, but it's hard to pick up your house and move it 50 miles down the road. Location, location, location. Well, in life, what are the three important things? I would argue foundation, foundation, foundation. Where are you building your life? On what are you building your life? Some of you will know this. This is a little cross-section for some uh, education purposes. This is a cross-section of a basement. You can see the the ground level, the grade level off on the right-hand side, and then the foundation wall coming down, a concrete slab going off to the left. But at, underneath all of that is a footer, that a spread footing is what it says below, below the wall. What is the purpose of the footer? What's the purpose of a footer? Support. What else? Will somebody else say something? Stability, add stability. Um, when, uh, when I was young, uh, I helped build a house uh, for uh, Marilyn and Louis Stedman. And um, I was there the day we drove the stakes in the ground and the backhoe came in and started digging out. The back corner of their house that's underneath their dining room area just off the side of the kitchen 
um, uh, little breakfast nook area, we hit a rock. The guy hit a rock and could not break down through it. And after, I mean, it was enormous rock. The whole place is covered with huge boulders. And at some point, uh, the guy digging said, that's solid and it is not going anywhere. It is a solid rock. Why? Because you want to build on a solid rock because when your foundation wall is here, you can see in the picture, the footer spreads the load so that the wall doesn't just keep pushing down in the ground. I've told the story before of a house not far from here that was built on telephone poles. They didn't go down very deep, and they built this little house for them to live in, and later on they decided they wanted to add on to the side of it, and they had more money, and they built a basement foundation and built the second part on the side of it. What happened? The part with the solid foundation stood, but the part that had been built with the, with the uh, telephone poles in the ground, it kept sliding down to the point that it started out being an even step from the kitchen into the living room, and pretty soon there was a step. It wasn't even, it was a step because there was no footing, there was no foundation that was holding everything solid. So when we look at this, we we, as they're building these things, they want to consider the weight of the soil, how much strength, how much support does the soil provide under the footing. Some of you are like, we're not building a house. Why is he going down this road? Because when we understand this, we, it will help us to understand it in our lives. What kind of a footing, what kind of a footer would you need if you were building in the middle of a swamp? Well, you'd need a pretty big stinking footer to displace the pressure and the weight to be able to hold it. But what if you're building on good, solid ground? Well, you still need a wide foundation, but not quite as much. Most, most houses, the foundation or the footer is about 20 to 24 inches wide and about 8 to 10 inches deep. And then the, the wall sits on that. But obviously, if you're building a ranch one-story house, you need a certain size footer. But what if you're building a 10-story building? You need a bigger foundation. The bigger the building, the bigger the foundation. I, if you're building a doghouse, how big of a foundation do you put under it? I don't put a foundation under it. It's a doghouse. If it falls down in five years, the dog will probably be gone. It won't be that big of a deal. But if I'm borrowing money and I'm building a house that's $250,000, I want my investment in my house to be solid for a long, long time. We understand each other? So what kind of a foundation should we put under our lives that's going to last for this lifetime and I would argue ripple effect into generations to come? Jesus is saying, you know what? The person who hears these words of mine and actually does them, actually lives them out, I'll show you what he's like. He's like a wise man. He said, and he builds his house. Isn't it interesting? I don't, I, I'll back up to this. I'll liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. What I say about whoever, this is you. This is you. This is you. Beth doesn't get to build my spiritual life. It's my house. It's your house. It's your house. The decisions that you make and how you build your house, you get to live with it for now and for eternity to come. He goes on here. Look at the passage as he continues. He says, verse 25, and the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat and beat on that house. Rains fall on everyone. It doesn't make any difference if you are the most godly person in the world or the most pagan, rains fall. We see this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Jesus said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Rain falls on everyone. Floods rise. 
winds blow. Houses, homes, families, and lives are beaten down day in and day out. And if you're not in the middle of that, you probably will be before long. So how does the first parable end? Well, he says, not only did the rains descend, floods come, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it says, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. In Mark chapter 12, verse 10, Jesus refers to himself when he says, have you not read the scriptures, the stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. He's referring to himself. And so obviously, as we look at this idea of what foundation are we building on, the solid rock is a, is a direct statement to building on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ as the rock of our faith. Well, if this is the heads of the parables, if this is the thesis, this is what you want to do, Jesus also flips the coin over, gives the antithesis, gives the other option, and says in verse 26, follow along with me, where he says, but everyone, but everyone. Let me stop there for a second. For every whosoever will, there is a whosoever who won't. Just because it says whosoever will, don't think you'll be swept along with the crowd. The reality is, is that the crowd sweeps along everyone. It is the whosoever will that turns and says, no, I make this choice to be the wise one to hear it and to do it and live it out and be the wise person in building my house. He says, but, but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them. So again, we're back to the comparison. Yes, they both heard, but the one heard and did it and the other one hears and doesn't and doesn't do it. He says, this is what that person is like. He'll be like, he'll be like a foolish, a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Again, he makes this choice, not building on the rock, but building on the sand. We, we know this story. We could sing the song. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. We know that. We know that. We hear that. We can say it, but are we doing it? But are we doing it? Verse 27, almost the exact same wording. And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house. Same thing. Storms come and it fell. But it didn't just fall. It fell and great was its fall. Rains descend. Floods come, winds blow, houses and our lives and our families are beaten upon all the time. I want to build on the solid rock. A few observations that I see from this passage that you might want to just jot down. Here's the first one. We all build on a foundation. Every one of us that takes breath and lives our lives in this life today we are building on a foundation from the time you're born. You might not realize it. Parents are helping to build that foundation. But you at some point begin making those choices of your foundation. You begin making the choices of how your life is going to be lived and what things are going to support you up. Have you built on the wood, hay, stubble or have you built on the solid rock? We all build on a foundation. Here's the second thing that I noticed. We build over time. We build over time. How many of you are thankful that the foundation you're standing on today is not the same foundation you built on when you were five? I mean, we like, well, yeah. I hope the foundation I'm building on today is better than what I was doing five years ago and that five years from now will be even better. Amen. I want to keep I want to keep growing. I want to keep building. I want to keep inspecting that foundation to make sure there's not any kind of junk in there causing a bad foundation such that my my life, my faith, the testimony in my church and family and community is compromised. We build our lives one moment at a time, one decision at a time, one response at a time. How are you building over time? Here's the other one. I may have even alluded to this already. We live in the house we build. We live in it. 
we live in it. What's the saying my wife, my wife says? You make your bed, you get to lie in it. Well, in reference to this, you, you worked at laying that foundation, you're building on it, and you get to live in that house. You get to live in that house. All of us have gone to the trailers and visited the trailers at uh, the fair at one time or another, and they've got them set up, but you walk into them, and what happens? Like, man, I can feel this thing wobbly and shaky. I don't want to, I don't want to live in that. I want a solid foundation. How's your life right now? Does it seem to be jittery and shaky? Maybe you got a foundation issue that needs to be addressed and needs to be taken care of. But here's the other thing that I noticed on this. Our house building affects others. Our house building affects others. As Glenn growing up, there's a season and a time where the decisions I'm making, hey, it affects, it affects me. It doesn't affect anybody else. And all of a sudden, I meet this cute girl from Titusville, and we start to date, and my foundation begins to affect her life. And then we get engaged, and then we get married. And guess what? Now my foundation that I'm building, it affects her world big time. And then God blesses us with, with children, and the foundation that I am building affects them as well. My prayer is that my kids get the foundation from Jesus Christ and don't pick up any of the junk that I have built into their lives. Amen? As parents, we want the best for our kids. But we're building a foundation, and it affects others. My foundation that I build, it affects each one of you in one way or another. We want to make sure we're building on the right foundation because it affects those around us and it affects generations to come. Let's read this passage, John 3, 16, together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil." When we look at this and see the picture of the wise, it's offered for us for salvation. But men and women in ourselves, we love darkness rather than light. We want to build on our own foundation. We want to do it my way and nobody else's way. And Jesus said, no, here's an example of a wise man or a foolish man. And when he got done, verse 28 and 29 of this says, And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Will you bow with me in prayer? Father, throughout this series of the Sermon on the Mount, we have learned and been exposed to teaching of the new kingdom and how, how you call us to live. Help each one of us, Lord, to be wise to not only hear it, but to live it and to do it. Give us the strength even to swim upstream when the culture and the world around us is doing one thing. God, help us to live and move in the direction you've called us to go. And Father, if any of us here today are recognizing that we have been foolish, we have built on a sandy, flimsy foundation I thank you, God, that you are in the business of replacing foundations when we put our faith and our trust in you. Lord, we love you today. Protect us from the storms of life and help us to build on your foundation. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray these things. Amen.